Hello everyone, uh, Kale here from University, and today I'm going to be taking you through my Common Up essay that got me into Stanford. So let's get started. Um, I'm sure most of you know that colleges are like using Zoom, so I'll be recording on Zoom today. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So when you start um, applying to colleges, uh, you're going to realize they're like, there's one of the, one of the big ways to apply is through the Common App. And one of the major components of your application is like the Common App essay, which is like this big essay that you need to answer. Uh, it's not that long, maybe like three to four pages long. It's not that big, uh, 600 words about. And you have to pick one of these prompts. And the last prompt actually is share an essay on any topic of your choice. Uh, it can be one you've already written, one that responds to a different prompt, or one of your own design. Uh, so that's always an option. But for me, I like having a foundation, uh, somewhere to start. So I looked through and just found one that uh, spoke to me. Um, I think when I was going through the process of picking an essay topic, I actually tried to get a subject for each one and then looked at, you know, the ones that uh, I think I could write about, uh, that I like talking about, and something that is honest uh, and true. So here's the first one. I think this one kind of, I kind of liked, I was gonna talk about, I don't know, I'm Filipino, uh, from Seattle, stuff like that. But mm, that's not the one I chose. Uh, this one, number two, I think, is the one close. No, no, no. No, it was number three. Um, so I picked uh, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. Uh, what prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? And the idea that challenged me um, as like this like high schooler who had only been to place in the United States, maybe Canada a few times, um, was when I, I think, first really visited the uh, Philippines. So I'm Filipino, everyone in my family is from there. Uh, my mom was born there. And in, I think, 2016, 2015, something like that, I visited the Philippines and I was just really confused um, by the domestic health culture. Uh, it was not something I, had, I was familiar with. I, didn't, I don't have any needs here in the States. But when I went to the Philippines, all of my family members, at least the ones I stayed with, you know, had maids and it kind of freaked me out. Um, I didn't, didn't know why people were doing stuff like that. And yeah, sorry, my, my books just fell. I'm gonna get them. Okay, but that is what, um, that is the topic I chose. And as a prompt of my thinking, and the outcome was me kind of coming to terms with it and like recognizing my own privilege coming from a first world country. And well, you'll see, you'll see. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of different things that came out of that. And that's what I wrote my essay on, basically. Mm -hmm. So let's get started. I'm just gonna read it, I guess. Um, but definitely, it was probably my third or fourth idea. Um, yeah, so when you, when you start your essay, just write a few. I think I recommend like get your topics down and pick two or three you actually like and then write a paragraph. And then I found myself, you know, I just wrote this whole essay basically in like a week because I was so interested in it. Um, it took me like a few months to like make it perfect. But yeah, yeah, so here's the essay. And I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna like omit some parts, but here's, here it is. Uh, reflect on a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. What prompted your thinking? What was the outcome? Uh, so it was 650 words, I think was the limit. And here we go. So I used to think that Filipino culture was disgusting, not for the food and the traditions or the people. As a Filipino American, those were things I had grown up with and will always love. However, when I first visited the capital of Manila, I was sickened by my Filipino relatives and everyone who benefited from a system of oppression that was the domestic health culture. 
Relatives I knew well and respected didn't express gratitude to the maids or drivers. Nannies came with us to restaurants, but sat with the children and were served our leftovers. I was addressed as sir, or bull, in Tagalog by people 20 years my senior. It was unsettling. Here is a society that so blatantly regarded these people as inferior. From what I could see, it was Filipinos who permitted such an injustice to exist. When I turned to the US, I told my parents that I didn't enjoy the Philippines. I didn't want to go back. I was disturbed by the way Filipino culture treated people differently because of their lower class. In America, I was raised to treat everyone equally and never discriminate. My parents believe that it's different in the Philippines, more complicated. They explained to me that the class system is part of Filipino life, but that doesn't mean the entire culture is unjust. We agreed that domestic help in the Philippines faces oppression and exploitation, but that was something I had to accept about Filipinos. At first, I thought that was completely hypocritical. My family espoused equality and treating everyone with respect, yet they accepted and participated in a social hierarchy abroad. I didn't understand how they could justify that, so I was asked to consider my own culture. Liberal Seattle has many flaws, but it's an identity I'm proud to wear because of how tolerant it is. Paradox has been me silence conservatives in our city for being intolerant. Realizing that revealed my own parallel hypocrisy. My progressive values come from being against discrimination and prejudice, yet here I was judging an entire people because of a difference they had little control over. I understand now that while I have to be sure of my own principles, I can't impose my worldview on anyone. But while I must accept the way the world is, the way I treat people is up to me. When I last visited the Philippines, I was less offended by the maid culture. My complaints couldn't help. Submission I viewed as unjust serves to provide a livelihood, an alternative to poverty. To simply label Filipino culture as disgusting would ignore this complexity. Dignity and happiness can be found in the system. While I may feel disturbed by this inherent inequality, my interactions don't have to condone oppression. It can be a way to express kindness and solidarity. So there's my essay. Um, yeah, I mean, you tell a story. Um, and I think it, I wrote it with the intention of being like a journey. Um, here's, what, here's what started in the beginning. Uh, here's what my reaction initially was something. Here's how I changed. Um, and you can get a lot of like tips on how to write essays like this um, online. I'm sure if you want to ask, you can just DM me on Instagram at Kale Correo. Um, <laughs> but yeah, that's the big one. Um, I think, you know, my views have changed since then. Um, some things are always, you know, you look back and you're like, why did I think that in high school? Um, so many, so many things. But um, probably my best piece of work from the coming up. Um, I'll show you one other essay that I really had fun writing. Um, I, I, like, I like reading it too. So I'm gonna read it. Uh, tell us about something that is meaningful to you and why. Uh, the moment I get home, my mind stops. I flick my electric kettle on, select a mug, and prepare dry ingredients for infusion. The kettle rumbles. I pour the steaming water into my mug and watch it change color. Sipping green tea, chai milk, hot cocoa, or sometimes simply boiled water, I stare out the window, reflecting on my day. In my cup, I find a welcome reprieve from the cold, constant drizzle of Seattle's half-year wet period. Especially in my junior year, tea was the only way I let myself relax, do something mindless and routine. You can't work while you're drinking tea, I told myself. Even now, it's still an excuse to forget testing, homework, and trauma. At least once a day, it's just me and my mom. Tea and coffee will always give me this temporary sort of freedom, uh, an artificial way to experience the quiet, transitory parts of life. I find serenity in every commute, rest whenever I've waited for others in a cafe. Warm mugs are a reminder of peace never more acute than on a plane, where I can spend hours transfixed on the horizon. Sipping tea alone is a short break that can mean everything. A cup of oolong or a grande mocha isn't just 10 minutes trying not to bring my tongue, but also time thinking rather than doing. It's how I procrastinate, bitter flavors, distraction in the busiest of days. So that's, that's one of the small essays I think that Stanford asked me like this prompt. Um, so I hope that helps. Uh, I think my biggest tip from this is that I was completely honest. Like I loved writing this because it was completely true. Uh, and I didn't have to search for, for like the topic, like what is meaningful to you, you know? Um, 
that's like something should come to the top of your head. And for me, it was taking a break from working, um, from, you know, stress. And in high school, I did that by uh, just drinking cups of hot water, like with some of the stuff in it, like tea or whatever. But I would just, just kind of like drink my mug. I don't, I don't, but I don't I would just have a mug and just stare at the window. And I did that probably every day, like multiple times a day. I would have nothing. I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't even check my phone. Um, I, I don't do that now. <laughs> but in high school, I just wouldn't. I would just stare at like the rain in Seattle, um, <laughs> which is, is calming, but also kind of depressing. But uh, it got me through it. And yeah, that, that is incredibly meaningful to me. Um, I'm sure some people will be like, it's just tea, it's just coffee, like whatever. Uh, for me, it's it's a break. Uh, it, it saved like I don't know me from going crazy uh, many times. Yeah, so those are two essays um, that I really liked from my Common App. I think maybe there's one more I can share. Um, no. Um, let's see, let's go back. I think I have one more I can share. No, no, these are just my small, mm, these are little small things that I never asked of you. Um, I'll just leave it right here, you guys can read it. Just pause the video, but um, yeah, when going through these, um, I think I, I didn't spend too much time on these. Um, I think probably the hardest thing for me was the 50 word limit. Uh, I wrote too much usually. But yeah, just what, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? That doesn't work, second thing, third thing, but just, I mean, definitely take it seriously, but you don't wanna like reach. Um, this is all like true. Like what would you actually do? How did I spend my last few seven years? Yeah, like, oh yeah, this is fun. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's it for now. Let me know if you guys have any other questions. Uh, you can definitely DM me, leave a comment below. Uh, like, subscribe, and share, whatever. Um, yeah, so good luck to all of you. I'm, I'm here if you need me. Um, there are lots of other students. It's, it's hard, um, but you got it. Good luck, juniors, seniors, whatever, whatever you guys are. Uh, College to me, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a bit. So get through it, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop sharing and see you around. <clears throat>